In this video, we review IP groups in Azure. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we review how to use IP groups with Azure Firewall rules. Let's start with what IP groups are. I'll let you take a guess. If you guessed a group of IP addresses, you are correct. The name kind of gives it away. Maybe we can just jump into what they're for. Let's say we have a firewall and in this firewall, we have a couple rules. Those rules have several different IP addresses or subnets specified as the source or destination. We need to add additional rules to the firewall and we need to use the same IP addresses for those rules. We get that all set up and then later something changes and now we have to modify the IP addresses in all those rules. That means we have to go back into each policy and update the list of IP addresses. That can be time consuming and error prone. There's a better way with IP groups. IP groups let us group a collection of IP addresses and use the IP group in the firewall rule. This way, instead of updating rules in each policy, we can just update the IP group and the policy will use the new settings. It's that simple. To make it even easier, we can import a list of IP addresses from a CSV file into the IP group, a handy way of doing a bulk update. IP groups are global and we can use them across regions. We don't have to recreate IP groups for each region we use them in. Something else to note, Azure Network Security Groups don't support IP groups. Use Application Security Groups with NSGs instead. Check out the link to more information on the screen or below. We'll jump into the demo in a few seconds. If you've made it this far, you must be enjoying the video. Please let me know by clicking that subscribe button. It's free and it helps the channel a lot. And a big thanks to all my channel members, your support is appreciated. Also check out my courses on udemy.com, all about AVD, Windows 365, and other Azure topics. The links are below and I bet Udemy has some sort of sale going on right now. Anyway, let's go to the Azure portal and create some IP groups and add them to firewall rules. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's get started by creating a couple IP groups. We'll search for IP group. And we'll select IP groups. Click create to create our first group. Select the subscription and the resource group. I'll use an existing resource group for this example. Give it a name and select the region. The IP groups are global and can be used across regions. We'll call this one DNS out, and I'll create this one in East US. Go next to IP addresses. Notice there's an option to import from file. I'll add these manually. We can add a single IP address, a subnet, or a range of IP addresses. I'll use a single IP address first, then I'll specify a subnet. Add tags as needed and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. It will take a minute to finish. That finished, let's go back to IP groups and we'll add a second group. Select your subscription and resource group. We'll give it a name, web out for this example. By the way, the number of IP groups could grow fast. Take some time to come up with a better naming format than what I'm using. I'll create this in central US. We'll go to IP addresses and we'll add the client IP addresses. So this would represent the IP address or range of IP addresses for clients that need access to the internet. We'll add a subnet. And next we'll add a range of IP addresses. The range is separated by a dash. We can add tags as needed, go to review and create, and we'll create this one. Here again, we'll give it a minute to finish. That finished, and now that we have our IP groups, let's go to the Azure firewall to create our rules. Here we are in the Azure firewall. This is an Azure firewall basic but it works the same with other SKUs. Check out my last video to learn more about Azure Basic Firewall. Let's open up our firewall policy. It works the same with different rule types. Let's start with a network rule. If you have a collection already, you can just add the rule. For this example, we don't have a rule collection for the network rules. So let's create a rule collection. We'll give it a name, net call one. Again, maybe think of better names for production. We'll give it a priority of 600 and make sure it's set to allow. The rule collection group is a default network rule collection group. Now we'll create the first rule, give it the name DNS out for this example. 
Here's what we've been waiting for. Change the source type to IP group. And for the source, select DNS out. For protocol, we'll do TCP. Destination port is 53 for DNS. We'll leave the destination type as IP address. Notice you can use IP group for destination types as well. And we'll use the wildcard or the asterisk for the destination. Once done, add the rule and the rule collection. It can take some time for the rule collections and rules to add. I'll give it a minute to finish. That finished and now we have our rule collection and our rule. Let's go to the application rules next. We have an existing rule collection in this example. It looks like it's allowing a SQL connection to a public DNS server for some reason, but that's not what we're here for. Let's add a rule to the existing collection. We'll select the rule collection group, default application rule collection group, and we'll select the rule collection app out. Give it a name, web out for this example. For the source type, we'll change that to IP group and we'll select our group web out. That's the group we created earlier. We'll set the target FQDN as all. Scroll down to protocol and we'll add HTTP and HTTPS. And save. We'll give it a minute to add the rule. There it is. That's how to use IP groups and firewall rules. What if we need to make an update? Let's say we need to add a subnet for web access. We don't have to update our rules. We can simply go back to the IP group. We'll select web out. Go to IP addresses. Here we can make our updates. Let's add a new subnet. There's our subnet. We'll save. The save will also take a couple minutes to finish. Once finished, it will refresh and we can see the updated IP addresses in the group. The point is we don't have to go back and edit every rule with the update. We just make the changes in the IP group and the changes are reflected in the firewall rules that use the IP group. I hope this helps you better understand IP groups in Azure. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.